On False Devotion to Our Lady I find seven kinds of false devotees and false devotions to Our Lady, namely, 1. The critical devotees, 2. The scrupulous devotees, 3. The external devotees, 4. The presumptuous devotees, 5. The inconstant devotees, 6. The hypocritical devotees, and 7. The interested devotees. The critical devotees are, for the most part, proud scholars, rash and self-sufficient spirits, who have at bottom some devotion to the Holy Virgin, but who criticize nearly all the practices of devotion to her, which the simple people pay simply and wholly to their good mother, because these practices do not fall in with their own humor and fancy. They call in doubt all the miracles and histories recorded by authors worthy of our faith, or drawn from the chronicles of religious orders narratives which testify to us the mercies and the power of the most holy virgin they cannot see without uneasiness simple and humble people on their knees before an altar or an image of our lady sometimes in the corner of a street in order to pray to god there and they even accuse them of idolatry as if they adored the wood or the stone they say that for their part they are not fond of these external devotions and that their minds are not so weak as to give faith to such a number of tales and little histories as are in circulation about Our Lady. Or, at other times, they reply that the narrators have spoken as professional orators with exaggeration, or they put a bad interpretation upon their words. These kind of false devotees, and of proud and worldly people, are greatly to be feared. They do an infinite wrong to the devotion to Our Lady, and they are but too successful in alienating people from it under the pretext of destroying its abuses. The scrupulous devotees are those who fear to dishonor the son by honoring the mother, to abase the one and elevating the other. They cannot bear that we should attribute to Our Lady the most just praises which the Holy Fathers have given her. It is all they can do to endure that there should be more people before the altar of the Blessed Virgin than before the Blessed Sacrament, as if the one was contrary to the other, as if those who prayed to our Blessed Lady did not pray to Jesus Christ by her. They are unwilling that we should speak so often of Our Lady and address ourselves so frequently to her. These are the favorite sentences constantly in their mouths. To what end are so many chaplets, so many confraternities, and so many external devotions to the Blessed Virgin? There is much of ignorance in all this. It makes a mummery of our religion. Speak to us of those who are devout to Jesus Christ. Yet they often name him without uncovering. I say this by way of parentheses. We must have recourse to Jesus Christ. He is our only mediator. We must preach Jesus Christ. This is the solid devotion. What they say is true in a certain sense, but it is very dangerous when, by the application they make of it, they hinder devotion to our Blessed Lady, and it is, under the pretext of a greater good, a subtle snare of the evil one. For never do we honor Jesus Christ more than when we are most honoring His Blessed Mother. Indeed, we only honor Mary that we may the more perfectly honor Jesus, inasmuch as we only go to her as to the way in which we are to find the end we are seeking, which is Jesus. The Church, with the Holy Ghost, blesses Our Lady first and Our Lord second. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesu. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. It is not that Mary is more than Jesus, or even equal to him. That would be an intolerable heresy. But it is that, in order to bless Jesus more perfectly, we must begin by blessing Mary. Let us, then, say with all the true clients of Our Lady against these false scrupulous devotees, O Mary, thou art blessed amongst all women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. External devotees are persons who make all devotion to Our Blessed Lady consist in outward practices. They have no taste except for the exterior of this devotion, because they have no interior spirit of their own. They will say quantities of rosaries with the greatest precipitation. They will hear many masses distractedly. They will go without devotion to processions. They will enroll themselves in all sorts of confraternities without amending their lives, without doing any violence to their passions, or without imitating the virtues of that most holy virgin. They have no love but for the sensible part of devotion, without having any relish for its solidity. If they have not sensible sweetness in their practices, 
they think they are doing nothing they get all out of joint throw everything up or do everything at random the world is full of these exterior devotees and there are no people who are more critical of men of prayer of those who foster an interior spirit as the essential thing while they do not lightly account of that outward modesty which always accompanies true devotion presumptuous devotees are sinners abandoned to their passions or lovers of the world who under the fair name of christians and clients of our blessed lady conceal pride avarice impurity drunkenness anger swearing detraction injustice or some other sin they sleep in peace in the midst of their bad habits without doing any violence to themselves to correct their faults under the pretext that they are devout to the blessed virgin they promise themselves that god will pardon them that they will not be allowed to die without confession and that they will not be lost eternally because they say the rosary because they fast on saturdays because they belong to the confraternity of the holy rosary or wear the scapular or are enrolled in other congregations or wear the little habit or little chain of our lady they will not believe us when we tell them that their devotion is only an illusion of the devil and a pernicious presumption likely to destroy their souls they say that god is good and merciful that he has not made us to condemn us everlastingly that no man is without sin that they shall not die without confession that one good peccavi at the hour of death is enough that they are devout to our lady that they wear the scapular and that they say daily without reproach or vanity seven paters and aves in her honour and that they sometimes say the rosary and the office of our lady besides fasting and other things to give authority to all this and to blind themselves still further they quote certain stories which they have heard or read it does not matter to them whether they be true or false relating how people have died in mortal sin without confession and then because in their lifetime they sometimes said some prayers or went through some practices of devotion to our lady how they have been raised to life again in order to go to confession or their soul been miraculously retained in their bodies till confession or how they have obtained from god at the moment of death contrition and pardon of their sins and so have been saved and that they themselves expect similar favors 